Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Meredith. I am one of the FOF educators um, for the company, for the team, and I'm excited to have you here today. We are going to be going over all things rope. So rope placemats, rope coasters, tips and tricks, inspiration. Um, I hope I can really inspire you with lots of different ways to use rope um, and different techniques to use it to, to make things that you want to do um, on your own at home. Um, I will let you know in our background today, we have Amy and Ryan, they are sending me questions. So any questions that you might have, please send those over in the comments. If we don't know them, we will get back to you um, with those answers. If we do, we'll, we'll get them answered for you, things like that. Um, we won't be asking for any personal information or ask you to click on anything. So be sure not to click on any links or anything like that. Um, we will do our best to clear out any spam. And then um, also let us know where you're from and then what your home FOF dealer is. We would love to shout out those stores um, and give them just a little, a little appreciation. You know, all of our FOF dealers, they're, they're awesome and they do a lot of amazing things. So um, shout them out for us. We are going to go ahead and get started. Um, I have so many things I want to show you today. So I'm going to start with just starting a circle. So very basic, just getting going. I feel like once you get the handle of starting a circle, doing an oval or, or anything else, just is a little bit easier in that way. But real quick, let's talk about rope first. So I use um, this stuff right here. It is diamond braided clothesline. Let's see, let me actually switch here so you can see. Diamond braided clothesline right here. This is what I use. Um, I like it because it's cotton. Um, you can get a lot out of it. Um, and it's fairly cheap. You can get it in the hardware store. I got mine at Walmart in the hardware section. Um, I think they're like eight bucks per little thing. Um, so I, this is what I use for multiple reasons because you can dye it also. I love to dye. You'll see I've got a few dyed ones on here. I love to dye the rope as well. And because it's a cotton, it easily soaks up all of that dye. So that's what I use there. There are also some other things. Um, Walmart and other places also sells this white stuff. Let me switch over here again to show you. Um, this is a little bit more, um, it has more of like a sheen and a silk to it than I like. Um, it's not as matte as the, the cotton um, clothesline is, but you can get this also. And it comes just like this in these little wraps and then it's wrapped around the center just like this. And then also are these types that here with like the colors and the fun ways. So if you're doing a basket or you know, something like that also, and you didn't want to color it, you could do something like this. Lots of different options. Um, but my personal preference is the cotton clothesline braided cording. And it's because you can, personally for me, because you can dye it. So my process for dyeing, I've had people ask me this before. What I do is I unwind an entire roll of these and there are a hundred feet on this. And then what I do is I measure out probably about a yard. So 36 inches roughly right here. And then I just go in, in and out on itself, just like this, wrap it back and forth, just like this. Um, and I just do the entire roll like that. And then what I do is I get, um, the writ dye and it is, it can stain your hands. I wasn't thinking and I stuck my hand in it when I was dying mine to like pull the stuff out. My hands were turned blue very quickly. Um, so use gloves, tongs, things like that. But what I do once I've got all of it wrapped back and forth like this, um, you'll have a whole bunch of, of layers of it. What I do is I stick, I fold it in half. I stick the middle part in and I leave the outsides out. So it's kind of like this sitting in the bucket or in your sink or something like that. Um, that's what I do for these. And then once that's done on the, the middle part, I will then stick my sides, my two ends in. So then I've got really dark here at the end points and then in the middle, and then it goes lighter. Once I've done that, and I don't do it for very long. I'm not a huge, I don't, I don't have the patience, we'll say, for dying, and I don't boil the water or do anything like that because, again, to me, these are coasters. I'm not necessarily doing fabric that I care about that's going to be washed a bunch, so I don't really follow all the rules on the back of the bottle, but it's all right. Um, so then once I've done the center in the, the bucket and then the ends, I will then just dip the whole thing in it for about, like, 30 seconds, pull it out, and then I throw it in my washer just like that. I don't let it dry or anything like that. Um, it comes out all finished like this. For this one, I chose like a denim, which is, you can see on these two here. Um, but you can tell that it's like darker and lighter all the way through. So whenever you're, you're doing them, you get darker and lighter that, that ombre look. So, um, that's what I do for, for my cording and how, how I, 
how I do that. So if there's any questions on that, or if you have any tips or tricks, if you've done um, color dye, things like that, you could do different colors as well. I haven't ever done that just because of time, but I think that would be cool to do like um, a red in the middle and then a yellow and a blue and sort of have them blend together. If you let them sit longer and you get most of it in, then it will also mix and you'll get sort of a rainbow effect too. So many different things you can do with it. So um, if you have any that you've done, try and grab it off the ground here, um, feel free to share them in the, the comments. We would love to see them. Send us a message, anything like that inspiration. We'd love to see what you've created with it. So if there's not any questions on, um, and I apologize now, I do talk quickly. Um, and I, I talked with some of the other educators about this. We are just very passionate about what we're talking about. And so when we talk, most of us, when we talk quickly like this, specifically Mickey and Karen, we're just really excited and really passionate. Not that the other educators aren't, but it's just, it's our thing. It's what we do. So I apologize. Um, Amy will remind me if I'm talking too quickly and will slow me down. So, um, but this is all being recorded so you can go back and watch it later on as well. So next um, I'm going to talk about starting. Now we're going to get back to starting. So I'm going to switch over to this camera right here just so y'all can see. What I do, and this is just a little trick that I learned. If you have any um, ways that work best for you for starting, I'd love to hear them. But what I do is I pull back the outer piece like this, and you've got what's on the inside. And I cut about an inch and a half to two inches off. So let me get my scissors here just a second. I'll show you. We're going to cut off about an inch to two inches of what's inside of the cording. Oh, and I missed a piece. I'm working around the camera, so bear with me here. So just like that. And then you just um, smooth it back out. And my cording on the inside is right here. So I have all of this that's open and there's nothing in it. And the reason I do that is because it makes it easier to start your circle because you, you don't have that big bulk. I'm going to trim up. I always trim up this end. I don't like all that frayed edge there. You can burn it if you want. Um, I don't always do that because I don't like to see the black. So like if you look here. You can see, oh, you can see where, where I burned it. But if I go to the other side, you can't see it as much. So, um, but then what you're going to do, you are going to just fold it in on itself, just like this and wrap it around like a little cinnamon roll or swirl or jelly roll, whatever you would like, just like that. And I'm going to do that just a couple of times till I have about a dime size right there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a straight pin and I'm going to push it all the way through the middle. So I'm gonna hold this between my fingers just like this. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. And then I'm gonna hold it between my fingers and I'm going to slowly push that straight pin all the way through. So it's holding it in place just like this. There you go, like that. Any questions on that so far? All right, before we get to sewing this, I wanted to mention Y'all, look at this. If you don't have one of these magnifying sets yet, you definitely need to have one. So this is normal view. And if you put the magnifying glass in front of it, huge difference. This is great for these ropes because you are working with um, a smaller surface area to sew on and getting it lined up between the two ropes, things like that. So I love this. And I also wanted to mention, because we I've seen a couple questions about this on social media that they don't, it's hard for people to tell the ones that do have these already. It's hard for people to tell which size is what if you don't put them back in the box <coughs> correctly, excuse me. So if you look right here on the end, there's two lines, I'm trying to get it at the right angle. So there's two lines right there. So this is the second highest magnification one. And here's the one right here. If I can get it at the right angle. Right there, there's one line. And then here's the one with three. So this is the strongest magnification right here. And then here's the lightest or the, the least, the, the least magnified. So huge difference. I like the, the middle one is what I normally stick with. Um, I have really bad eyes also. So this is, it's super helpful. So let's get to sewing it now. What we're going to do, I just set my machine to a zigzag stitch. So uh, today I'm using the Foff Creative Icon 2 and under essential stitches, hold on y'all, I'm sorry, my throat, <coughs> excuse me. I'm getting over like a horse throat, 
had at the beginning of the week. And so now I get those little tickles in the back of my throat. Sorry. So I'm choosing a zigzag stitch. So on the Foff Creative Icon 2, it is going to be stitch number six under utility stitches, one, one, category one, one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to widen it. <coughs> I make it about 4.5. And then I'm going to narrow it or make it a little bit um, skinnier. So I'm going to go all the way down to 2, 2.0 for my length. And my width is going to be 4.5. Then what we're going to do, I'm going to make sure y'all can see this. And in a perfect world, you don't sew over needles, y'all. Like I, I'm, I'm really not one to sew over needles on a regular basis. But, you know, if we're all being real with each other, we know that we sew over needles every now and then. So I'm giving myself permission for this to sew over the needles because it just, it makes it so much easier. But what I am going to do, I'm going to keep in mind to just go slow. And when I get up to that needle area, <coughs> I'm going to go just a little bit slower and knock on wood. When I was doing all of these samples, I did not break a needle. Um, but then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it around and we're going to backtrack. You can hit reverse if you want to and get it going here. Um, or you can just um, turn your coil around. And I'm stopping with my needle in the down position also so that I can easily turn it back and forth here. And I just do this like three or four times. I just want to make sure that I'm catching the majority of these um, pieces that I have coiled in here. But then I want to start working back to where my tail comes out. And a little just um, thing to keep in mind, whenever you are doing this, you want to have your tail come off to the right, how mine is, and not over here coming off to the left. I can't really do it that way, but imagine if it was flipped over. Because what you're gonna do, if you're doing just a coaster or a placemat, you can fit that all underneath your machine, no problem. But if you're doing something larger, like a basket specifically, to do a basket, we're gonna curve upwards, or to do um, a like a rug or a mat or something, you want the bulk of it to be coming out to the left side of your machine this way. So that's what's happening is this is going to grow. This coil is going to grow to the left. So I want my tail to be on the right. So what we're going to do, we are going to come back over here. And I'm going to get this. I'm going to use my little stylus here because I do not want to sew through my finger live. That would not be a good day right there. So, but if you notice, I've gotten it started right back over here. So my tail wraps around right here. I'm going to pull out my pin now. I just did that three or four times back and forth. Let me get all my threads out of the way here too. Let me cut them. If you have ways that you start yours that, um, that have worked for you, please share. I would love to hear any other um, tips that y'all might have. I'm trying to get this thread out so it's... Probably won't be an issue, but just in case. Okay, so then what we're gonna do, make sure y'all can see that there. Again, I've got my zigzag. I still have it as a tight zigzag, but in a minute I'm gonna widen it a little bit. I keep it tight here at the beginning so that it grabs more. And this is a slow and steady process. So you notice on your open toe foot, I'm using the open toe foot. Um, I don't believe it comes with the machines, it's something separate you would need to purchase. I have the open toe foot on, but there's a red line right here in the middle. And what I'm doing is I'm lining up my rope, the middle of it, with that red line in the middle of the foot. So that whenever um, I'm sewing that zigzag back and forth, I know that it's going to catch both sides of my rope, just like this. And it doesn't matter. I haven't found that it matters if you stop on the right side or the left side. Um, if you have a preference, that's fine as well. But you just want to stop with your needle in the down position, and then we're just going to coil it. Wrap it up here. And now that I've got it going, I'm going to widen or lengthen my stitch a little bit. So now I'm going to go back to 3.0 3, 3 for my length, but I'm going to keep my width at 4.5. <clears throat> I just want to make sure that it catches both sides, and I think 4.5 is a good middle. And if for whatever reason you don't catch something, you can always go back. It's really easy to go back. I am a creature of habit and I like things to blend. So I like to use thread that matches the rope that I'm using. So for this one, um, I'm using a cotton um, 
thread just because that's what I had that matched, but you could definitely use just a regular all-purpose thread. Um, I would not use embroidery thread per se for this because again, you are this, you're you're securing all of this. And by using an embroidery thread, it's a it's a thinner weight thread or a lighter weight thread, and um, it may not hold up as well. You can definitely add embroidery to some of your things, which I'm gonna show you a few of that. And with those, I do embroidery thread. But for actually sewing them together, I use all-purpose thread or um, a cotton thread. So as you can see, it's just a slow process. I'm going about two or three stitches and then stopping and coiling. But once you get going, you can get a good slow speed and just keep on going. So just like that. So any questions on starting a coil right now? that all make sense do a star with a straight stitch about to a star. yeah um are you talking about when you bonnie are you talking about when you're doing the center together i kind of like that i like that idea so like doing a straight stitch a star i love that and making i hope that's what you're talking about starting out the center um doing a star to to sew your center i like that idea better than my just doing my zigzag back and forth um, if you had a colored thread, I think that would be so cool to um, even accent that. So reinforce it by doing it multiple times um, to just give that star effect in the center. I think that would be really cool. That's a great idea. Um, somebody else asked, what size needle am I using? So I am just using a 90 universal needle. You could definitely use a denim needle, um, but 90 universal. And I have found that I've been able to go through multiple layers of this so like when you start to overlap um a little bit when you're getting done i found that uh, i haven't had any issues with that but you could definitely use <coughs> i wouldn't use anything less than an 80 universal uh, but you could use a denim or um a just a universal 80 90 100 anything higher in that way that's a great question so any questions on this? So like I said, once you get going, it just turns super easy. It turns in on itself. It's great. And like I said, if you happen to miss something, which I've had happen where I miss, um, I miss a little section, you can always go back and go over it. So we are going to stop with this one here. Um, I'm going to start one more here in just a minute to give you another idea, but I wanted to just show you the process for starting first. So next, what we're going to do is we are going to go through, I just dropped the scissors. Hold on. We're going to go through starting with two. So if you look at this one right here, oh, wrong one, this one here. If you look at this, I have two um, cordings here. I have my dyed one and then I have my white one. Um, so you can get that coil effect right there. So I wanted to mention also, these are a lot of my samples that I have. These could be done in a larger size, like this white one and this dark one underneath, I'll show you in a minute, into a placemat size. I just had so many things I wanted to show you that I did them in small format so that you could see them all and I could get through them all. So next we're gonna do um, two coils here. Same process starting, um, it's just, it's a little bit different. So let's switch back over to this one. And I have my dyed cording here. I'm gonna move my magnifying glass for a second. I have my dyed cording here. And again, same process. I'm going to pull back and pull some of this guy out of here, probably about two inches and just snip off like that. That's more like an inch, not two inches, sorry. But you get the idea um, so that it's right in there. And then same thing for my other one. Let me... Y'all, I have so many, I have so many of these things. Um, I buy out Walmart every time I do something like this. Um, and so that I've got like, cause I've got a bunch started already and I don't really want to cut off before I get going because then I can't finish it. So let me open up another one here. Um, I have a couple questions. Let's see. Um, I've made dozens of rope tri trivets. It is addicting and it's so, it's so quick and, and, there's no really thought to it. Um, I love that when I 
when I don't want to think about something that I'm sewing, the thought process of it where I can mess up. I love just the simple things um, that I don't have to worry about. So yes, it is very addicting. And then I wanted to just let you know, so my inspiration comes from just searching. So like, um, I'll show you a place here in a minute. I searched and I found one that another retailer sold. And I was like, I can make that. I'm not going to spend $20 on two when I can spend $8 on one of these that will get me two, two and a half um, placemats. So if you sew, um, find ways to, to make it yourself because then it makes it custom and original and one of a kind. So that's that's where I get my inspiration from. I find pictures that I like on Pinterest or just Googling or there's lots of Facebook groups as well. Um, and then I'm like, hey, I kind of like that. And, I, and then I kind of take my own spin on it too sometimes. So let's switch back over here. So I've got my two ends here and I cut um, part of the inside of this one out as well. And the same thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stagger them just a smidgen. I'm going to clean up the end of this blue one. Hold on just a second. I'm going to stagger them just a little bit, like a quarter of an inch. And then we're just going to turn it in. Same process that we did for our one cord, but with two. And... I just do it a couple times around. Let's see if I can get it just a little bit tighter. Here. And then I'm going to stick my pin, same thing, through the center. Just like that to hold it in place. And again, I want my coil to come off to the right side. So I'm going to make sure I've started over here that way. Get this back in here for you guys. This makes such a huge difference. Look at that. Such a huge difference to see clearly. So same process with this one. I'm going to shorten my length to 2.0. And I'm just going to zigzag back and forth. And then stop with my needle down and just go back and forth. And again, when I get to my needle, because I've got this pin in here, I know, I know, I'm going to slap my own hand for sewing. You shouldn't sew over pins, but there are, you know, I'll make an exception for this one. And again, I'm being mindful. I'm not going super fast over it. Um, I'm just going slow. I'm going to do just a little bit more over here. And you just sort of move it around. But I love um, Bonnie. She said, do that. Was it Bonnie that said to do a star? Yes, to do a star. I love that, that idea. I'm going to have to try that. If I wasn't live, Bonnie, I would be trying it now. <laughs> but I don't want to. I don't want to mess up right now. So, once you get a little bit going there, we're gonna pull this out here, and we're gonna scoot this over. I'm actually going to. I don't like where I've stopped, so I'm gonna raise my needle up and just shimmy this over here just a little bit, and then put my foot back down so that I'm gonna go between this blue on the left side and the cream um, on the right side. We're going to start our zigzag and needle down and just spin. And what you will notice, you're going to be like, well, you're only catching one side. Because I have two coils, we are going to have to go back and do, do another round. But because you're doing double, it actually grows a lot faster. Your, your coil, your circle, whatever it is you're making grows a lot faster. So it's kind of like you're doing double work at once or you're doing, I mean, it just depends if you're a half glass empty, half glass full type of person. <laughs> when I was making this one the other day, I was like, well, that doesn't work because then it falls through. But you can always go back and do another one. So I'm going to do this just for a little bit so I can get a bigger one for you guys to see here. And the way I finished my blue one um, for this one, I just ended my two and then I put a piece of um, faux leather on the corner to clean up the edges. You can do it that way. You can fold it over to make a loop. Um, you can make this into a larger placemat, um, a larger trivet, whatever, whatever you would like. I'm working, I'm actually not looking in my magnifying glass. I've got it at an angle so that the camera can see it, so you guys can see it. So I'm peeping over a magnifying lens. 
hoping that I'm getting all this right here. So any questions or anything so far? We doing good? And so you notice here again, I don't, I'm, we're going to have to come back and do this second row, but I just want to make sure that I'm still keeping it tight in there. What you could do also, if you wanted to, you could, I'm sitting here doing this, thinking about it. Um, you could just put two pieces of rope together and sew them in a straight line and just have a long rope that's two together already sewn and then coil it. You could do that as well. Um, so, but I'm just going to keep going the way I'm going here. And if you have an extension table, I strongly suggest using an extension table right now. Um, I just, for space sake today, I did not, but it makes it a lot easier when you're using, um, when you're making larger projects for the left side to have that extra space. Um, you could also use your embroidery machine, just put it on there like normal and still have it in sewing mode. So same process. I'm going to unroll a little bit over here. I'm getting tight. You want to make sure that you have enough cording unwrapped from your two little um, things so that you're not getting any resistance here. But we're getting up to the end. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go one more time around this. And we're just going to stop there. So I wanted to have enough to show you. So if I move this out of the way, you notice, look, it's coming uncoiled like that. It's not all together. So all you would do is keep it flat and go back to the center. And we're going to do, I had the blue on the left side and the cream on the white side before on the right side before. Now I'm going to have the cream on the right side or the left side and the blue on the left or on the right. I'm getting my left and right mixed up. So you can see this. And then just keep going around. And so it is like doing double work, but because you're using two ropes, you're getting more done in one sitting than you would if you were just doing one rope. And I'm getting my coil here. Hold on a second. I'm wrapping around because I've got my tails. Let me just cut these real quick. It's all right. We'll just cut them. That way I'm not wrapping my tails around here. And again, we're just keeping this flat and lined up edges to edges. And just going around. Just like that. Any questions? Y'all doing good so far? I hope this is that this has all been very clear. My explanation of everything. I want to get this side done here so y'all can see the whole thing. got it all sewn together right there and that gives you again to a look a different look you could do this would be really cool with um if you dyed some red and then you had white um it would look like a like a candy cane for christmas um you could do so many different types of things like different candies or um, like a lollipop or um just do all solid or two different colors so um so many options there with this with this ending um so again, that was, let me show you, I'm going to move this stuff out of the way so you can see. So that was this one here, that guy right there. So any questions on this guy? Um, that's a good 
And, and that's that's what I was thinking too, Connie. She said, would first stitching the two pieces together allow for enough of a curve? That's a good question. I don't know. I didn't, when I did mine, I always did mine on the curve, but that would be good to know if sewing it all straight, like I had mentioned, just putting two pieces together and sewing, if it would turn on the curve enough. I think that's what you're asking. So again, yeah, it's definitely one of those things you would have to try and see um, if it works. But if not, again, it's not it's not difficult to keep it all in place to, to then go back and do the second as you go around. So lots of different options. And then another thing, again, I, I'm a creature of habit. I like things to sort of blend and be all the same. I always use thread that matches, but you could definitely use thread, a different color thread. I like the look of the cream with black thread and then doing some extra zigzags and things like that on it. So you could definitely give a different effect by using a completely different color thread um, to add in some accents. So the whole thing together and then go through, do some decorative stitching, do um, just a satin, like little sections of satin stitching, so many different um, options there. So somebody said how to make a bowl. So we're not gonna go through the whole process of making a bowl, but I'm gonna show you, I made this little, um, just a little, a little holder. Um, that I can put beside my machine. I can put clips and stuff in there. You can put, you know, put it beside your bed, put your jewelry, stuff like that. So many different things like that. Um, but we're, I will get, I'll go to this one now since somebody mentioned the bowl. I already have one sort of started and then we're just going to make our curve up and I'm going to give my tips and tricks again. We're not going to do a full bowl or basket or anything um, today. That's a whole nother class. I just wanted to give you inspiration for lots of different ways to use um, rope. So for the bowl, let me go to this one. We're going to come back over here. I already have one started for us today. Um, that's about the size of the center that I have there. That's super bright. Sorry, y'all. I'm not sure how to make that. It didn't look that bright before we started. Let me get a quick drink really fast. But here's the size. So for that rainbow bowl that I just showed you, it's about seven. What, am, what do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got nine coils here so once you get going um once you get to the the size you want the bottom of it to be what you're going to do i'm going to pull this magnifying lens off because it is going to be in my way and this is part of the reason why you want to sew with the majority of your your rope whatever it is to the left side because we're going to start to push it upwards if you had it on this side if you had the tail come off on this side you can only get so far you're, you're getting underneath the arm of your machine uh, Mary asked, do you know if there are any books available for purchase? If there, with I, I don't know. I have not seen anything like that. Mary, where I get the majority of my inspiration is on um, Pinterest. I search on Pinterest, but then also those Facebook groups. There are quite a few rope Facebook groups with thousands of people in them sharing their what they've made, their inspiration, um, different things that they've created, not even just bowls and placemats. I've seen purses. I've seen some really cool fold over purses. Um, so many different things you could do with rope. Um, so check those out, look in their photos um, and see what they've done in there. I, I can, I don't know that I've seen a book per se, but that would be, I mean, rope is a, is a big thing right now. I feel like, I feel like it's a hot thing. So um, there should be a book or something. There might be, and I just, I just don't know. So going back over here, what we're going to do, I've already started and done my circle. So I'm going to just start here right at the end. I, oh, I lost my tail. Hold on. <clears throat> this is a great opportunity to show you if you don't have one of the machines that has the automatic needle threader, watch this. So I've threaded my thread under here and over, and I'm going to hit one button. And what it's going to do, oh, I just love that, y'all. It threads it. The thing with cotton thread, it does get linty. So definitely clean your machine, blow, blow, or not blow, suck all of the, um, the lint and all of that out from your machine once you're done with doing rope projects because it definitely does make a little bit of a mess in your machine. So I'm going to widen this just a little bit. Okay. So I'm at a length of 3.0 and a width of 4.5 and I just have overlapped where I was at. But what I'm going to do, let me get my hand in here the right way. I'm going to put my hand under here and I'm going to, I've got my pinky and I'm going to put it as close to the foot as I can because we want it to push upwards just like this and again slow and steady it's not a, it's not a race just like this and again we're just making sure that this is pushed upwards so what you're doing now is you're sewing 
you'll notice that the, the stitching goes more on top of the two versus on the side of the two. And then we're just pushing up underneath right here and then I'm using my thumb and I'm spinning it as it goes. Oh, someone mentioned finding books in the library. That I've I'm not surprised. There, there's got to be books on it. I feel like this isn't a new thing, but it's definitely not. I feel like it's something that's just come back on trend in the past couple of years. So there's got to be books on it. I feel like there's a book on everything. There's there's a book for everything, and then there's a holiday for everything. Is the joke that we have. So we're just gonna keep on going around here, and I'm gonna do this a couple times around so you can see. And it all depends on how much you're pushing upwards, whether your bowl is more straight up or if it's more flat. Using a rope hat, yes, making a rope hat. Oh, that would be awesome. I would love to see that. If you want to share pictures of it, um, definitely share that in the chat. I would love to see a hat. I have not ventured to do a hat. So, yeah. And there are tons, 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 tons of YouTube videos also. Um, so many people enjoy doing this and enjoy sharing their techniques for creating things. So let me see if I can, y'all are, I'm trying to make sure my fat thumb's not in the way over here, but I wanna make sure I'm getting that curve as well. So same thing, make sure you don't have any tension that you've got in a long tail going over here. I don't know where the, the person who mentioned the hat is located at, but it is definitely, I am in North Texas and it is definitely something that would be useful right now. We have had some hot, hot, hot days here in Dallas. So, I'm just gonna keep going a little bit longer. This one looks like it's gonna be a little bit smaller than the one that I made originally, but that's okay. Cause I kind of wanted the one I made originally to be a little bit smaller. But if you had a bigger base bottom, let me mention this really quick so you can see this. If you had a bigger base bottom, um, you would be able to make it, let me see if I can back this out just a second here. You would be able to back it out so that your, your bowl or whatever it is you're creating would eventually come up over your machine. Um, it would be great for that. I have found that, like I love my, I love the creative icon and and all that you can do with it. But I've also found that when doing rope anything, if you want it to be a bowl or a basket or anything, it's actually better to have a smaller headed machine, like this part that's above the needle, because you can get it curved around a lot more. There's so much space under here that I can't get it out as much as I would probably like to unless I had a bigger base bottom. So keep that in mind. If you have a, um, a machine with a smaller head, I've, what I've seen the most successful are actually the vintage machines that um, have that small head and then you can really get it comes straight up too. You can really get that that right angle to get that curve going. But I love that these machines have the strength to go through um, go through all of this with no, I don't have to second guess it. I don't have to sit here and hold my breath that I'm going to pop a needle or something like that. Um, I know that it's got the strength to do it. So let's talk about finishing. So I have my little, my little bowl here, my little trivet. And again, you could just keep on going, make your size bottom bigger. There's so many different things you could do. Are you putting any tension on the rope as you feed it? No, but that's a good point. But I have read, read, watched, learned, in the because I've been doing rope for probably two or three years now, I've done different things with rope. I have read, learned that if you pull a little bit of tension on your tail, that that will help give it that curve upwards. Um, so that is a good tip for what I'm doing for today. I didn't want that that deep curve, but that is how you would get more, more of that right angle curve. Is you would pull the tail. Let me show you. You would pull this tail a little bit as you go. And then I've also learned that if you set it on top, I wish that I didn't have this big glare here. I'm sorry, y'all. Let me stick my hand under here. There you go. I found that if you sort of sew with this, with the tail on top as you go, that will also give you more of that, that right 
curve for those um, tighter baskets and bowls and things like that. So keep that in mind. Um, again, just for today, I'm just doing these little, little catch all bowls. So to finish, a couple different things you can do. You can um, either cut off, I'm going to cut off my, a little bit here. I've got probably about four, four or five inches left here. You can push in this and make a little, a little coil like that. Um, continue sewing around like this and have like a little hook on it. You can, um, if you wanted to add on the leather piece at the end, like you could do the same thing. You could do the coil with the leather piece on the end. You could just finish it where it sort of hides. Um, I'll pull it off to the side. Um, I mean, there's so many different, let me see. I've got this one here too. This one, I just finished it and then put the little leather piece on top of it. Um, lots of different options. So for this one today, I'm going to make, let's make a loop because I don't have any with a loop. Um, can you do this? Yes. So you can actually sew rope with any machine. There are no limitations to what machine can sew on rope. Um, so the creative 3.0 is what this person mentioned. Um, you can definitely sew with rope with that. It just has to do um, with how much of a curve you want or um, the durability sometimes when you have heavier duty machines, you can, you don't have to necessarily worry as much when you're sewing over. So what I'm gonna do, you'll notice I've got three pieces here. I did pull out a little bit of what was in there. Um, so I'm just gonna squish them together and you could widen, that's probably what I'm gonna do now that I'm looking at, I'm gonna widen my stitch a little bit. So now I'm at 5.5 so that I can make sure that I'm grabbing all of this. And I'm going to come about right there. I'm actually going to make it a little bit wider. We're going to go 6.5. Then we're going to hit reverse and go over it. I like to just really make sure that this is not going to come out of place. And we're going to make it a little bit narrower also. So we're going to go back to 2.0. So I have it at 6.5 for my width and 2.0 for my length. So it's more like a satin, a closer together satin stitch. There you go. And then we're just going to cut it. There we go. Just like that. And there's our little a little bowl. Let me switch back over here so you can see. There's our little bowl. Super quick, super easy. Um, this was really the size I was going for on this one here. Um, but just like that. And you can put change in there, um, your keys, you know, so many little things. I feel like my daughter's going to want to steal this one and put her little just little things in it, her lip gloss or something in it. She's going to want to put her little stuff in it. Um, so now let's switch to adding in accents like this. This is what we're going to do next. So I'm going to switch out my thread and then I'm going to choose a narrow satin. I'm going to switch to me over here. A narrow satin stitch, which there is an adjustable satin stitch on this machine. It's going to be under utility stitches and then it's um, category one or like the tab one, 1 1.1. And then it's going to be number 12. And so it's a really narrow, um, not narrow, a really a shortened in your length stitch, a zigzag stitch. Um, but then you can adjust it if you want to as well. So I'm going to switch in with my thread here because I'm going to do a couple of these for you guys. So any questions? This is a great opportunity for questions while I rethread really quick. I hope y'all are enjoying this. Um, I hope everybody had an awesome 4th of July for those that were celebrating. Um, and then our friends in Canada, I hope that they had an awesome, I think it was Victoria Day, right? Y'all had last week. I hope y'all had a great holiday as well. Um, we have somebody on our team and I know that they celebrate that. So I'm gonna rethread here. Canada Day, sorry, not Victoria Day. I'm sorry, Amy. I knew it was one of them. I'm sorry, y'all. Same sort of celebration that was 4th of July. So I hope you all enjoyed your extra long weekend as much as we did here in the U.S. So I have changed my thread out. I've got a blue on and um, I've got my little bowl. And I'm going to show you sort of because I have to visualize this. Um, I take my little friction pin here. And what I'm going to do is I did every other one here. You could definitely do every one, whatever you wanted to do. But I don't want to hit the wrong rope or the wrong, the wrong coil as I'm going. And I want to stop at the same point. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my friction pin 
and draw my lines. So I'm one off over here. So, and then you can actually sort of circle around to make sure you're hitting the right one. And then every other one so that you know. So we're gonna start here, stop here and, and so forth. And then you can just take your iron to this afterwards and it will just disappear. So let's switch over here. I've got 15 minutes left, y'all. Hope you don't mind going over. We're gonna, I'm not good with time on these. I just have so much I wanna show everybody. So we are gonna start right here at this one. I'm gonna lower my needle down so that I know where I'm starting. And we're just gonna turn it around as we go. Oh, hold on. What is it? About my uh, yes, okay. Here we go, and then we're just gonna turn it as we go. We're actually gonna make this our width a little bit shorter because I think it's too wide. So I've got this at a 5.0 for my width and a 1.0 for my length, which it was already preset to that. So I just adjust it, and then you just slow, slow and steady going like that. And what you could do if you wanted, you could always go back over it twice um, to give it more. Y'all cannot see this. I'm so sorry. I need to figure out my lighting here. Um, you could always go back over it twice um, to give it a more, a thicker, a thicker look there. But we're for time's sake, we're going to stop there today so I can show you a few. So there's that one. And then we're going to switch our thread out here. I can get my, my tail on them. There we go. All right, so next we're gonna do, let's do, I'm trying to decide, let's do this color. This one's gonna be a little bit different. I'm only doing three on this one versus four that I did on my other one. Bear with me, my, my hands are going around the camera here. And again, let me show you all the, the needle threader here. So we're gonna go behind our needle guide right here. I can get my fingers in there. We're going to come under here and then through this guy and then the thread cutter on the side and then hit that button. Look at this. Oh, I love this. Look at that. It's so easy. And I don't have to do anything. Okay. Same thing here. We're going to start right there and do our zigzag, do our satin stitch, which is basically a zigzag. And I'm just hitting the rope. I'm not going between the rope this time. I am just going right on top. Of oh, my thread got caught over here. That ever happen when you're sewing and all of a sudden your thread got caught on something and it pulls the whole spool up and it scares you half to death? That happens often. So just like that and then cut. So you do the same thing. Um, let me pull this right out so you can see. You do the same thing for this last one and then just put your little iron to it. And then there you have another little, a little bowl. I love it. And that at least gets you started with the thought of what you're doing with your bowls or baskets or anything that you're creating. So any questions on those? If not, we're gonna move to squares. So I like a challenge and it took me quite a few times to get a square good, but I already have one started. So um, I'm gonna show you how I did that. So get this guy out of the way. And again, same thing, I'm gonna make sure my tail is off to the right over here. Oh, let me switch my thread. We don't want an orange thread in there now when I haven't been using orange thread. So one second. Lots of thread changing when you do this if you like to add in some color. Oh, hold on. There it goes. So when you do this, after you've taken your thread through the take-up lever, I put my presser foot down so that it gets my thread in tension and I don't have a lot of slack pulling. And then I thread it just like that. Okay, so we are going to start a little bit where we've already gone. So I'm gonna go back to my zigzag stitch and I'm going to make my width at 4.5. So my width side to side is 4.5 and my length is at 3.0. Just like that. And once you get to a side, all I did was I made myself a right angle here, just like this, as best as I could, and got it so that it was straight and straight back over. So it takes a little bit of adjustment, but what you're gonna do, once you get there, you're gonna take one of your pins to hold it in place, 
just like that. I don't know if you can see this right here. I have a pin holding that in there. And then instead of cutting my thread and starting back over here, I'm just going to move this over and just sew over my outer piece. And then once I get up close over here, then I'm going to shift it back over so that I'm catching both sides. Again, going slow because I've got my pin in there. Just first stitch or two. And same thing. Do a little bit there. And then we are going to right angle it again. Just make some adjustments as best as you can here. So you get it where you want it like that. And then we're going to push our pin through there. I see one question, uh, two questions. How would you make integrated handles for a basket? And then any experience with rope damage? No, I haven't had any experience with the rope damaging my machine. Again, it can be linty, I will say. Um, so you definitely want to clean your machine after you've done some rope projects. Um, you'll see the buildup on your foot and your needle area and, and all of that. So. Just keep that in mind. Going slow, a couple stitches there, pull my pin out and do a couple more. Um, okay, so the other one was integrating handles. So same process as um, the bowls here, but as you're doing it, you can um, take a piece of it. Uh, let me see if I've got one here, this one. This is smaller, but it'll hopefully give the same, give the idea. So, once you get your, your circle or whatever, or your handle or whatever, as big as you want it, then what you can do is you just pull out so that you've got loops and continue sewing around. So imagine that this little bitty circle was a lot bigger. So it's sort of the same process as um, what I'm doing with these triangles, just evenly matching them. And then you would end up sewing around these two. So you have that opening to where you can grab your handles. That would be really cool if you had like a long one like this um, for like, like a bread basket or something. That would be really cool for this. So I hope that answers that question. If not, please let me know and I can um, uh, try and explain it a different way. So I've got my two sides here. Let's do one more. Again, get my little right angle here as best I can and put my pin to hold it in place. Just like that. And then we're going to sew. Let me see if I like that. Yeah, that's good. Oh, we're going to sew just over the, the outside piece here. And when you get up to your, um, your two pieces, let me hold this in place here. Like that. And you could also reinforce it. So you could go backwards a little bit here so that you're holding it in place or once you're done with it you can always go back over it just to make sure and then here's our last one I have seen a really cute thing um, where people made a little kitty out of the circle so they did the circle and just did two points and then went back in and did a little zigzag for whiskers things like that um, I think would be super cute also so same thing over here but what I wanted to show you is once you get back around here we're going to tack down this one here. Let me, let me use my stiletto here so I can turn this and hold it in place. Once you get all of your four corners, then it's the same process as a circle. You're just doing it on that right angle that you made there. So just like this. And then you would just keep going around until you had it um, as large or not as you wanted. Get one more corner here. Two more. Get two corners done here. Just like that. So that's the beginning of your little square coaster. So take this here, that one there, just like that. I did mine a little bit bigger on this one. You can tell my one that I just showed you is a little bit bigger. Um, but yeah, definitely play with it. And then that will give you that square effect. You can also do um, a square on the inside with your with your tail when you start. Um, let me put this here. You could go back and forth like this 
I've made another one like this to start um, to give you that square look. And then you just go around it once you do your, your coils together like that. So you could do the same process that way. So any questions on that so far? I know we are almost at time, but I really wanted to show you um, the tassel one, this one here, how I did this. Um, Cause I just, I think that was super cool. And I think these would be super neat as larger placemats. So um, starting process for rectangle. Yes, yeah, so the starting process um, for a rectangle would be the same. Um, you would have your tail and you would just do it like this. I don't know that there's any um, minimum or maximum that you would want to do, but just like this going around. So if anybody's ever done a jelly roll um, rug, it's the same process as that, but with rope instead of your jelly roll um, fabric and whatnot rolled in. Um, are you going to show... I, I can show one with the fabric swatches. I can. If y'all don't mind hanging with me and you want to hang for a little bit longer, we can definitely do that because I, I had them all because I didn't know how much time I would have. Um, and again, you always plan for more than what you have time for. So let me show you tassels and I will show you fabric and then we'll, we'll go from there. So um, tassels. Let me find one that did I cut? I think I cut all of them off. That's probably what I did. So actually, you know what? We're going to use this. We're going to use this one that I had already started here. So let's switch back over here. Yeah, if y'all don't mind hanging with me, I mean, we can go for a little bit. We can go over. I don't think Amy and Ryan will mind. Probably rolling their eyes in the background at me. <laughs> um, let me get this on here. Because when you do the tassels, you only need one, one rope. Stop there, put my background to this. And I already have some cut to show you. So let me cut oops, my tail down here. So what I did for the tassels was I cut four um, inch pieces of my cording and then I pulled that center piece out. So I literally just have the outside shell. And then all I did was you fold them in half like this and you do a loop across. So you can either go over like this and then you pull the little tails through I don't know what kind of, it's not really a knot. I don't know what you call this little technique with rope, um, but just like that. Or you can do it underneath. Let me show you what they both look like. Actually, I don't know. Let's see if it will make a difference. Yes, it makes a little bit of a difference if you do it a certain way. So this is the one that's over and this is the one that's under. So it's really just a preference. Um, but what you do is you just put a bunch of those on and then you push them up. I'm gonna do a couple more here so you can see a few of them. And you'll notice, so I did these at four inches and I ended up cutting off more than what was actually, like more than half of it. But if you have a shorter little tail or a little, little piece, it's, it's more difficult to work with. So um, I liked the four inches was a good middle for my fat fingers to work with. So I did some back and forth like that. Give a different effect. So you'll see that there. And then what we're going to do, you would still have, um, so say you, you, you got to the size that you wanted it at, you would stop with your needle in the down position and you would feed on these little pieces. Um, and it took, it took probably about 30 or so for the coaster that I did. Um, but I just made them as I went and did a few more, slid them over. You can keep them tight. You can keep them loose. So this is somebody had asked, you know, needles and whatnot. I had no problem sewing through this. So this is about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about seven, six, seven layers of, of rope. Again, some of them don't have the, the cording on the inside, um, but it's still pretty thick. So same process that you did when you're just doing two pieces right by side, side by side. You just want to make sure you're catching both as you go, just like that. I'm going to stop there so y'all can see this. So just like that. 
and then it caught. And you can also, um, if you want to go back over for a second time around um, to just secure it again. But then what I did was if you take, I'm trying to think the live, Amy, tell me the live that Kathy Fromm did recently where she used that, she did the, the felting, um, was that on Fof? The one where she had the brush and she, you know, brushed it out to get that effect. Is that a Fof one? What are those brushes called is what I'm getting at. No? Okay. Um, anyway, it's a really, um, Amy, if you know what the name is, it's like a, this is really bad, y'all, but I'm just going to be real with you. It's a brush that um, I, I have a golden doodle. And so he, he, he gets, we need to clean out his hair. And so I didn't use this brush. I got another one, but it's the really fine bristle brushes. It's like a dog brush. Yeah, Amy's right. It's like a dog brush. Um, it's not like a normal brush you would do on your hair. It's the really pointy. Um, you use it for felting and things like that. But that's what will give you. You can brush out the ends to get um, that edge there. Let me switch this one so you can see. Brush them out. And then once you do that, you can go around and um, a chenille, someone is saying, uh, possibly, I, I, I'm not sure, even if I had heard what it was called, I'm not sure that I would know. Um, I'm not sure I would know what it was. So once I do that, um, I just trim them up all the way around. So I think this would be such a cute placemat in a bigger size. Um, again, I might, I'm probably going to go back and make some bigger ones like these because I just love fringe. I feel like that's on trend too right now is fringe and whatnot, but that's what I did all the way around there. So, and then somebody asked about fabric. So let's do fabric really quick. Let me see. We, we're probably just going to add on to this one here. This one's going to be our little test one that we have, um, that we have here. So you start this at the very beginning, start your same coil um, in the middle that you have there. And then once you get going, if you take scraps of fabric, which I've got them because I planned, um, and they can be, you know, they don't, they're not a specific shape or size or measurement or anything like that. I just, I have all of these three and a half inch squares and I just cut a piece off of them. And then what you're going to do, let me sew a little bit here. We're going to have double, double cording, tassels, um, fabric. We're going to have it all on this one. So what you're going to do, you're going to take your fabric with your needle down and put it underneath that outside piece. And it does not have to be flat or straight or anything. I just pulled it tight, like looped it around just like this, right like that there. And then you just sew around. And you don't have to worry about this right here because as you go, your cording will end up on top of it. So let me get another piece here, cut another one. Again, just no rhyme or reason. Just take your scraps that you have, put it between the piece that is not yet sewn down, and just fold it over easy like that. And do your zigzag. Just like that, all the way around. So let me show you. I hope that did that answer your question about doing it with fabric. So this is the top. Oh, wrong camera. Hold on. This is the top that you're seeing me sew down right now. But on the back side, Here's where all of those scraps and stuff are. I kind of like the way that this looks also. you. I think this would be such a cool rug to do a large one in like a half bathroom, um, a big circle or even a big oval um, with all of your scraps on top. I think that would be so cool. And you could do it themed to Christmas and things like that as well or to different holidays or just summer. Um, but you get such a neat effect on the backside versus the front. So any questions on that? So I think I touched on the majority of what I wanted to. I know, oh, we're just a few minutes over. We're still doing good on time. Um, what about embroidery in the center? Okay, good. I'm going to get to that too. So you could definitely do embroidery. This is one that I had done also in the past. If you do not have a magnetic hoop, I strongly, strongly suggest getting a magnetic hoop um, because you would use the sticky tearaway on the backside and you can stick your, your, your coaster, your trivet, anything to it, your bowl, stick it to it, It'll hold it in place and embroider on it just fine. This is like a satin stitch. Had no problem doing any of that. You could definitely use a topper if you wanted. Um, I didn't because I, I kind of like the look, and I don't think it looks that bad anyway, even without a topper. Um, but that's how you would do that. <clears throat> I strongly, strongly suggest getting a magnetic hoop. You don't even have to use the magnets. You're just using that hoop 
with the sticky stabilizer on the back, which you can do with a regular hoop, but the magnetic hoops are just, they're just awesome. Um, so you would find the center, which there's really, you, there's no trick to it. You just mark the center and find the center for when you do them. How do you wash them? So I have not washed any of these, um, but you can. Remember, I did mention at the beginning, I, um, when I'm done dyeing all of this, um, I throw it in the wash to rinse out any that's left because I don't want to stain my machines. I throw it in the washer and then throw it in the dryer and no issues whatsoever. And then I just wrap it back up on its thing. Um, so it, it had no issues with washing. Again, this is cotton. So um, you could wash it before you did any of that to have any shrinkage, but I, I haven't seen any issues with it. So I think you could do the same thing. You could throw these things in the wash in the same way and, and dry them as well. Um, what type of cording do you use? I've never tried. Well, we would love to see you try it um, and share with us what you try. So what this is, I have one, I've got one, let me count y'all. One, two, three, four, five. I have five coils that have started. I thankfully have one that I have not opened. So you get these from Walmart in the hardware section, just like this. They are diamond braided clothesline is what I prefer because it's a mat, it's cotton. You get a hundred feet of it. These are like seven something. So about $8 with tax. And I just feel like I could make, you can make two and a half, three placemats for $8 plus tax, or you can buy a set of two for $20 and you may not like them. So I love these Walmart um, is the place to go. And then there's also a white one. This one has more of a sheen to it. You get it in the same section. It comes looking just like this wrapped around a little bit more. Um, I, the white placemat that I have here that I'll show you in a second is what I use that on. I just don't, I prefer the, the, the cotton cause I can dye it and things like that. But then there's also, you could get colored things as well that are already, um, colored like that. Um, do you wash it in a, no, I didn't, I didn't. I literally threw it in my washer. Shame on me. Probably. I threw the whole thing in my washer from the bucket of dye washed it, did like a quick wash. I didn't even do, I didn't use soap or anything. I just did a quick wash. It's like a 15 minute cycle threw it in the dryer and it was done. Um, can you review rope type and size recommendations and threat? Yes. So the rope type, again, I just went over that. Um, if I need to go over that again, so this is, it's nine, it's 90 pounds. It's three sixteenths of an inch times a hundred feet are what are on these little, um, rings of things. Um, and then I used, cotton thread or regular all-purpose thread. I would not use embroidery thread to hold it together. Embroidery thread is not meant to hold things together, but you can definitely embellish with embroidery thread. Um, and then needle, you can use a size 80 or higher, uh, universal denim. Um, I haven't had any issues. I wouldn't go anything smaller than an 80, but again, I haven't had any issues with an 80 either. Um, when you wash it in the machine, do you put, nope, mm -mm. I, it, it didn't actually. So the way I had it when I dyed it, I don't know if y'all remember me mentioning, I had it like 36 inches. I do it in about a yard length. And then I just go back and forth on it self like this. Let me show you like this, um, looping it together. And I it's, it's in three sections like that. And I threw that whole thing in the wash and no issues. Um, it stayed pretty much still in its coil. No, it doesn't knot up or anything. It's not, it's not really thin. So it's not like, um, threads on your clothing sometimes get hung up or if you pre-wash your fabric, the edges on that, those, those threads will get hung up. It's not the same as that. Um, lots, lots of questions. Hey, I love that. Normally, normally y'all are kind of quiet. So I'm so excited. Y'all are asking questions. I'm so excited. So many of y'all are here today. I was worried that with it being a holiday, it would be kind of, kind of slow. Um, is it pre cotton or is it polyester core? So that's a good question. Um, it just says braided diamond. Um, does it say it? It doesn't say. Um, that's a good question. I think are you asking to like do things in the microwave or something like that? Um, I'm not sure what the center is made out of. The center is like a shiny silky thread. Um, I, I don't know if you can put that in the microwave or not. That's a good question. If that's what you're getting at with that question. Um, do you have a front? Nope. I have a, I have a top load washer. Um, um, yeah, I don't, I just, we just have a top load washer and a front load dryer. 
Um, so let me show you two more things really quick, just because I've got them here. Uh, this one here. So these are all of these, but I wanted to show you these big placemats. And I just gauged the size of my placemats off of ones that I had already had um, when I did them. So for this right here, um, I just did my normal circle. And then I wanted to do just this little wavy effect here. And I was like, how do I get even little loops as I go? And what I used was I used one of those um, chalk liner marker things. I couldn't find mine to show y'all today, but it's the same diameter as um, like one of these small spools of thread. So all you did, these are actually a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger. So all I did was I put my spool or my whatever size you want it to be right up along there. I wrapped my thread around and I put a pin in it. And I did that. I kept going all the way around and I put a pin to hold them in. So I had all of these pins holding all of this in. And then I went through and I did my zigzag and I actually did it over it twice just to hold it in place. And I just kept going. So the same process I did for the square um, coasters a second ago, do the zigzag. So on the edge of this one, do it over here and just go back and forth just like that. And that's how I measured. I did this two times around. And once I was done, then I just started doing a normal circle. So I didn't push in on it anymore. I just kept it straight and went all the way around it just like that. Um, would you make, would you make, yeah, it is a nylon. Um, you could definitely do um, uh, an outdoor planter. I've done outdoor planters with it before. Um, you know, anything like that. If you wanted to take something camping with you to have a bowl, um, I think this is very like camping-esque feel to me. Um, so anything outdoorsy is what I would use this for. Um, and then my other one here, this is one of my favorite ones here, um, just a normal circle in the middle. And then for this, what I did was I braided. I was hoping to have time to show you all this, but again, you never have time for everything you want to do. What I did was I braided three of them together and I zigzagged the end of one of it to hold it in place. And then once I got to what I wanted, I took the, I think I actually have this here. Here's one piece at the center of that. What I did was I took my braiding before I did this little, imagine that this isn't sewn together here. And I just pushed my pins in to hold it in place. And I did that all the way around. I think I've got one more pin over here, maybe. No. Um, I did that all the way around to hold it in place. And once I got to what, because I, I did more braiding than what I needed. Once I got back around to the end, I snipped it and I took it all off. And what I did was I just zigzagged these two things together. Let me see if I can find that in the camera to show you. Uh, wrong way. Hold on. There we go. Got it. I just zigzagged them together to hold them in place. Um, I didn't like how they looked when you overlap them. So I literally just put them touching edge to edge and did a zigzag back and forth multiple times. You can tell that it's kind of bulky there. Then what I did was I put it back around on this and I just did my zigzag, my regular zigzag all the way around my circle. And then I did three or four more layers of, um, trying to, I'm backwards on here, sorry. Did three or four more layers of, of regular cording and then I did this. And to do this, what I did, you have to pre-make it the same way you do the braiding. I took my cording and I just zigzagged it back and forth. And I think this is like, uh, it's probably about two inches, an inch on each side. And I just squished it together and sewed a straight stitch down the middle. And I just kept doing this all the way. And I've got this long piece of it here and same thing. Then you attach it with a zigzag all the way around like that. Super easy. And it's very original and custom and one of a kind. You could add embroidery to the middle of this. You could do some, these would be great for fall to do um, a fall theme for your place settings at, at Thanksgiving or Christmas or Hanukkah, whatever it is you celebrate. Um, so yeah, those are, I hope, I hope I've inspired you um, with so many different things today. Um, if you have any questions or would like to see something again, um, please let me know. I can always make up a quick video and we can get that sent out, um, put that out on social media. But um, I hope you enjoyed today. Ryan, do you have the next lives? Um, I know Ra Amy was going to, if not, I know that what they are roughly off the top of my head. I can pull them up. So our next My Sonet Live is actually next Wednesday. I'm really excited about it. Oh, there they are. Perfect. Well, hold on. Our next FOF Live, I apologize, is in two weeks on July 20th, Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central. And it's with Mickey and she is doing Christmas in July. So all things Christmas in July. We're really excited. 
Um, if you can celebrate more than once a year, a certain holiday, let's do it. So Christmas in July is what she's going to be doing. But then next week, I'm doing the My Sonat Facebook Live, and I'm really excited about it. We are going to be making um, an In the Hoop um, uh, zipper bag. So I've got it all up here. Um, with a popsicle. Y'all, look at this. How cute is that? So um, I'm going to go through. This is one of our shape, our word sculpt shapes. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to add in lines for a zipper, all of those types of things. And we're actually going to go through the process of stitching it out, too, because I feel like that's where most people and even I get confused when you're actually creating something. So this is all in the hoop. Um, I'm really excited about this. So come join me next week on Wednesday, July 12th at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central. Um, and we're going to do this. So uh, if there's not any other questions, again, lots of friends and lots of people. Thank you so much. I'm so glad y'all enjoyed them. Um, I was really excited about this. I love all things rope. So again, thank you for joining me today. Um, I know it's been a busy week for everybody. So we do appreciate that you have joined us today and um, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much.